What up, gang gang? Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk today about the the karmic partners, right? The karmic relationships we find ourselves in. And that's something everyone can relate to, you know, like um you know, not everyone could relate to the twin flame journey. And while I was talking about the twin flame journey, I was like, I should definitely talk about the karmic journey as well. Because that's part of it. It's like a whole fucking, it's a thing. Sorry, my lips are all chapped. I've been chewing on them for days. <laughs> um, it's a terrible habit. Um, but yeah, so this karmic thing, right? You're, um, so let's kind of just go through the process here. Like what happens? Usually you meet them when you're young really immature, going through straight, going through like a transitional phase, you know, um, you know, hold on, I'm gonna go get chapstick, I'll be right back, all right, I'm back, probably doesn't look that different, but it feels different, <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, um, what was I gonna say, uh, so yeah, the karmic journey, um, so you, um, meet this person, right, when you're young, you're going through a transformative stage, usually it's like, I would say between the ages of 16 and 21 um you come across your first legit like karmic relationship right and um fuck right because at first they're all magnetism right you're just like drawn to them you're like we have everything in common da -da 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 -da. and here's where they differ from your twin flame is that they have everything in common with you <laughs> you know um Therefore, there's no balance in the relationship, right? Because you guys are both either yin-yang or yang-yang. You're never yin and yang. Um, whereas with twin flames, they complement you. They're like the completion of your soul, kind of. And like, you're already a whole person, you know, because you've grown on your own and done your whole shit. But they're the other aspect of you. Another incarnation of you, if you will. And so... Um, it's like <laughs> this whole fucking thing, guys. It's um, yeah, your karmic partner is gonna be um very magnetic, very uh, egoic, right? Um, because that's where you're at, right? When you meet them, you're in your ego, and um, that's the driving force between you. And this kind of goes back to how you have to do the shadow work before you can do the light work, right? <laughs> and I know, we all hate this. We all hate this because we just want to jump from like A to Z, right? We never want to do all the bullshit in between. But you got it. <laughs> this is it. This is that test to really um, put you through the fire. This is where you learn problem solving. This is where you learn conflict resolution. This is where you learn... All that shit, <laughs> patience, <laughs> forgiveness, um, boundaries, <laughs> fucking everything, you know, all that shit comes into perspective here, because that's where it's the most important, right? And you're like, ah, fuck this, <laughs> you know? Because um, it's always intense, but it's always intense on, like, one end of the spectrum. Even the numbness at the end gets intense. It's like... It gets so intense that you guys can't even stand being numb near each other, you know? It's like, um, because what happens is, is your, e your ego magnetizes you, right? They're attracted to the lower vibration of yourself, right? Because that's, um, I don't know, <laughs> it's a learning point. You know, you guys are still, like, you're, you're developing as people, so... You become each other's greatest lesson, you know? Um, <laughs> and it's all the bad lessons. It's all the lessons you don't want, you know? But, you know, it's also really great. Because then you get to know, like, what it's like to be around somebody who just vibes with whatever project you got going on. They just talk to you about shit. You know, they're, they're awesome. Um, karmic par partners are awesome because they're... They're so similar to you, you know, in a lot of ways. And you, you catch yourself, like, being like, damn, <laughs> like, we, we really are similar. But it's, um, it's a different kind of similar than you are to your twin flame. Because on your twin flame journey, that's where you guys connect on a soul level, right? Um, it's where the ego doesn't work. It's where that aspect of you kind of falls away and falls apart. <laughs> that's the next step, you know. But while you're in your egoic stage and you're like still learning and transforming that's where you meet your karmic partner 
they're not meant to last forever <laughs> and if you make this last longer than it has to it's just gonna be more painful than it has to be it's not like you're preventing an end from happening it's inevitable because they're not the one you're destined for right at the end of the day you have to accept that you are your own twin flame and and you have to also be cool with yourself you know um, because they're already inside your skin, they're already <laughs> in there, they're in your soul, they're in your head, they're there, you know, um, and so, like, you've always had your twin flame, and these karmic things are, like, tests, and, like, um, just things that we go through to help us develop, you know, and so that's why I always say, like, commemorate the good shit that came out of it, you know, commemorate all the lessons that came out of it, all the patience you ended up getting, all the lessons, <laughs> you know, it's like, that's, I really want to emphasize that, it's all about the lessons, um, in both karmic and twin flame journeys, it's all about the lessons that cause you to grow, right, um, usually the difference, though, is, like, when you get into a fight with your, your, your uh karmic that's like you guys start throwing daggers like verbal daggers at each other you're like you know what <laughs> you know and you say some dumb shit and um you know and it's just because you're living in that low vibration and you're just like kind of you guys meet each other there um because you guys met each other on like the beginning aspect of your kundalini um awareness I guess like I wouldn't say awakening but like awareness like you're understanding the energy there um learning how to understand it I guess um <clears throat> and uh yeah so you guys meet on like probably out of lust <laughs> or out of um out of whatever you know um from my own personal experience a lot of the bonding I did was, like, trying to escape my mom because I had a problem with authority. And I was like, I don't want anyone to be the boss of me. And uh, <clears throat> it's weird, though, because then, like, my karmic partner started taking on a lot of traits of my own mother. And I was like, fuck. Or, like, you know, and that was kind of a karmic lesson for me. Like, that, you know, just because I chose a different warden didn't mean that I was out of, like, this psychic prison, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> and so, and, you know, just, like the gaslighting, the manipulation, the control, all of it, on all sides, like, you know, nobody was innocent to it there, you know, and you have to really ta learn how to take accountability for that, that, like, you are also their karmic partner, so you're also doing that shit to them, you're also putting them in a bad vibration, you're, like, also, you know, triggering growth within them in certain aspects, growth in whatever direction, you know, um, and this is where forgiveness comes into play. Um, because you get to a point where <clears throat> you understand what the connection is. You understand what it's all about. And um, you understand that it's trivial and it has to end, right? That it's inevitably going to end. This is not it. You know, you feel it in your soul. You're like, this is not it. <laughs> like... Um, <clears throat> And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, there's, that's something, you know, like, we're made to feel like if you give up on love or whatever, that you're the bad guy, and bleh, you know, and it's like, well, sometimes love falls away from you because it's not the right love, you know, and so it's not even on the spectrum of love, really, because it's all ego, you know, and it's all the lower vibrational shit that you guys connected on, um, and because of that, because you're growing, your vibrations are raising, you can't connect with them anymore, you know, you can't, you know, and you try, and you try, because you love them, they're awesome fucking people, you're like, you know, I chose you because, you know, of blah, 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 and you want to keep that in mind, and you keep trying, and you keep trying, and it just doesn't work, time, and time, and time again, right? And, uh, that's the lesson, though, is you have to break codependency. Um, you have to break that need to possess the one you love, you know, to, like, have them, <laughs> if you will. It's like, um, 
they really teach you that. They teach you how to detach um, from certain, like, misconceptions you've had about love or partnership or companionship, whatever, you know? <clears throat> they help you break your fucking <laughs> mindset a little bit. They break, you, they break you through all the cognitive dissonance, <laughs> all that. Um, and it's usually really toxic, you know, because you're in that low vibration. And it's usually really fucking, um, just kind of, it's like an ego battle, <laughs> you know? Like, you guys are both fighting, like, who has the biggest ego? Who can be the biggest dick, <laughs> you know? And then eventually you're like, I don't even want to be a dick. Like, it's not even in my character to continue trying to be, you know? <laughs> and so you get out of that and you're like, I don't want to be a dick. I don't want to ruin this person's life or keep them away from the person they're actually meant to be with you know and i think that's when you realize that the karmic cycle has ended is when you start fathoming them with other people and it's not like it doesn't break your heart <laughs> you don't feel like sad or upset instead you get this feeling of like calmness and like happiness that like they can move forward and they can um they can grow and have what really fits them, what fills their cup, you know? Um, and then you kind of remove yourself as an obstacle in their life as well, you know? You, you have to realize that you are as much an obstacle to them as they may feel to you, you know? <clears throat> and, uh, and you have to realize that it's just as hard for them, <laughs> you know? This whole thing is just as hard for them. And how they handle it depends on where they are energetically, you know? I'm chain smoking because this is a hard topic. Um, because, you know, it is. But I feel like that's why I went through it, you know? That's exactly why I went through it is because I'm meant to talk about it and help people who are also <laughs> going through it, you know? Um, so you can understand what it's all about. So you can get, like okay, <laughs> it's not just some stupid, trivial bullshit that gets me nowhere, and no, you got somewhere with this, you got enlightenment through this, you got growth, you got lessons, you got good memories too, don't lie, <laughs> you know, you had a best friend that really helped grow you, um, and for that you gotta honor it, you gotta be like, you know, I don't regret it, because that was a beautiful time. Even even the hardships were beautiful because they were growth, they were change, they were, you know, <clears throat> and just coming through it with somebody um, that you had such a hardship with, you know? It's like, you know, it, it's so meaningful. <laughs> and, you know, when people come through this and they're just like, I hate my ex, blah, 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 the worst, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, then it's like, well, for one, you're failing to take accountability for yourself, um, and for two, you're failing to see the blessing here, um, the blessing that always was and was meant to come out of this connection, you know, you're, fa you're failing to see what all of this is about, and so, I gotta realize this, sorry. And so, yeah. And that's why you should just send them love and light every day. You know? Thank them. When you're thanking your gods, send a little thank you to them because they helped turn you into who you are today. <laughs> right? Um, whoever they are, whatever they did, they helped they help turn you into gold a little bit because they helped you they they taught it's like a sparring buddy in in martial arts or something they they tempered you they sh they helped strengthen you you know it's uh it's a lot and um but once the lesson is learned once the karma has come full circle and everything comes into perspective for you then it's like the karma gets released. And it's not even you that has to initiate leaving. At this point, they'll just go. 
or they'll just be like, it's time for you to go, <laughs> you know, and you're going to be at that point where you're like, well, this is my leap of faith. This is where I trust the universe to catch me. This is where I like jump into the unknown, take accountability for my own life, take on that independence and just fucking own it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just fucking own life. Um, <clears throat> that's what all this is about. It's about gaining your independence, releasing codependence from your life, releasing it from your spirit, um, getting a healthy mind and a healthy spirit, and even a healthy body, because then, you know, the healthier your spirit and your mind get, the more you crave, like, healthy shit. Sometimes I, I'll go shopping and I'm like, I gotta get some junk food, <laughs> you know, or whatever, and then... um but then I'm just like, no, I can't, <laughs> you know, I don't want junk food because then I'll like look at a fruit tray or something or like a veggie tray and I'm like, that actually sounds better. This, um, you know, green smoothie sounds better than a soda pop right now, <laughs> you know, it might give me more energy because of all the enzymes and not all that caffeine that eventually crashes you. Um, start taking care of yourself, you know, in a whole other way. Um, like, I have vitamins now and shit, <laughs> you know, like, just total fucking grown-up shit where you're just like, you know what, um, this is a good vessel, it, it brought me here and it helped me grow, and so you take care of your vessel too, you know, um, it's like cleaning your car, and believe me, I was terrible about cleaning my car, and literally my motto was, the body is a temple, and mine is like one of those fucking, uh, one of those temples in India, <laughs> or was it India or somewhere over there? And you know, where like maybe it was Tibetan, I don't know, where the monkeys come in and just throw shit around, and it's like, um, the floors are all jacked, and like, you know, you know, the temples, um, the temples from my father's lands, <laughs> you know, or to just like, um, you know, it's not like a modern day, like, fucking mega church or anything. It's like the fucking, all the cracks in the walls and all that shit. You know, that was my temple, right? And, um, and then I started seeing my temple in a different light. I started seeing my temple as the force of nature that was creating the cracks and the degrega degradation. That's a, <laughs> that's a tongue twister for me right now. Um, yeah, all the degradation of, um, of, uh, the temple, or the walls, you know, and all that stuff, you start seeing the foundation for what it is, and you're like, that's not a real foundation, because the real aspect of me and my temple is what grows through the roots of the trees that start cracking up the floors, that start, you know, busting it all up, the fucking vines that grow over the walls, the, you know, that's actually your temple. It's the thing that has the strongest foundation. It has the entire, like, crust of the earth, you know, and all that lies beneath it. And it's like, you realize that that really is your temple. And you never needed all these walls. You never needed to create, um, you know, whatever. And, and so you want to start um, helping it flourish, right? You want to, you want to watch the garden of your soul kind of grow, you know, I think it was H.P. Lovecraft who wrote this beautiful, uh, poem called The Garden, or A Garden, and, um, at the end, the very last line, he says, um, in a garden with my heart, you know, and that stuck with me, and I was like, that's my temple, you know, <laughs> my heart chakra, that's the core of who I am, because my Venus is in Pisces, so my love language, I, I love like a Pisces, <laughs> you know, and so, um, so for me, that is the core of who I am, and so when I, um, when I think about the law of attraction, or like how energy, how energy works magically, <laughs> you know, even, it's like, I think about it coming from the core of who I am, damn, I have food all over me, don't look, I was eating, I was eating breakfast, okay? Um, I'm a messy fucking eater. <laughs> One time I was, I was walking through the woods with, um, 
my ex and our roommate and uh, <laughs> and I had gotten a bunch of berries to stain this uh, stick and I was like rubbing it all over the stick and I looked at my hands and I was like well fuck and I just like rub it on my pants and my roommate's like we're going to a restaurant and I was like oh fuck <laughs> like, I was like I forgot that I was supposed to be like like, I was supposed to care about it. And literally since then, I've been a little bit more like, oh, fuck, I got a stain. But before, I was like, I don't give a fuck. I was a kitchen manager. What do I care? <laughs> you know? And it's like, but I don't know. He, he like, changed my perspective a little bit. He's like, the, just the way he said it made me think, like, oh, fuck, was I supposed to care about it? <laughs> like, was I supposed to, like, um, care? <laughs> I don't know. And fucking red berry fucking juice all over my pants, like all over like the front of my thigh. <laughs> I was just like, eh, we're getting margaritas, who cares? <laughs> um, yeah. Good times. And I don't even think the stain stayed actually, but yeah, anyway, see how that's what my brain does. I get ADHD brain and I just see a stain and I'm like, I could go on a tangent about my fucking stains now. Um, all right, I'm gonna shut up now. Um, but that's, yeah, <laughs> back, rerouting all the way back to the original purpose of this video. <laughs> um, your karmic partner is somebody that you should honor always. Um, and, you know, refrain from s speaking badly of them, especially when you want to, <laughs> you know, just like, you don't want to destroy what other people think of them just because you had a hard experience with them because you know the thing is the honest truth is is they get a whole different aspect of that person than you do you know they get a whole different version of them you get the karmic version of them so you get the lowest vibrational version of them <laughs> um and it sucks and they also get that of you so you know and there's like that other aspect of you that you don't really give to everybody else. It's just, I don't know, all that anger and frustration and the projecting and the blaming and the stupid shit and the lack of accountability, you know, all that shit eventually it adds up, you know. And so it's like, it's really not about making them out to be a bad person. They're not a bad person. They gave you exactly what you needed out of that relationship. Um they're helping you grow you know you're helping them grow you're helping them understand um and you're understanding more you know especially if you're a divine feminine you know that's we talk about how the divine feminine initiates the relationship of the twin flame thing they're the first awake to the journey and well that's also in a similar way they're the first ones to shut down a karmic relationship they're the first ones that are like, you know what? I've had enough. <laughs> this is, you know, we've gone too far with this. <laughs> and it's just fucking degrading the soul at this point. Um, because you just feel like you cannot connect with them on any other level except for that physical, their dimensional level. And when you're experiencing 5D shit, <laughs> like, you can't stay there you know you can't stay in that energy anymore and so it's always the the divine feminine who initiates leaving the masculine right and then you know then their twin flame shows up <laughs> you know and they get they get that they get a better experience they get the experience without all the conflict and the drama and the nonsense they get the connecting with somebody who compliments them like who compliments them in the way that they are like that missing puzzle piece but they're not missing anything you know they're both whole people but they like show up as the matching piece to that person the yin and yang you know and vibrational matches and all that and you know by being an aspect in their life you help them and by walking away <laughs> you know you help them to go on to who it's supposed to be you know um and that's a beautiful thing to do that's a merciful thing to do you know it's worse to stay and try to make something work that just doesn't fucking work you know you're holding up four fucking people you know um for four journeys you know because ultimately 
it's four journeys and it all comes down to two journeys yes but you know at one time two were split into you know they fractaled okay they fractaled that's the best way to put it um but anyway i'm stoned i'm gonna let you go I just wanted to do this little blah, 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 <laughs> you know? Um, so, namaste, and thank you for your time. I love you all, and I will talk to you on the next one.